Today we're going to address rock protection on the Project Gladiator. So we've taken off the Rubicon rail that uh, came factory. We had already trimmed it down for 40 inch tires, but it doesn't offer the rest of the protection that we want, as well as some assistance getting in primarily on the other side for the wife. So what we're going to do is add the Genrite uh, rocker trim armor. So that's going to go here with a bunch of rib nuts. And then after that, we have a set of rock slide engineering powered steps. So I know what you're thinking. Powered steps are crappy. They're going to get ripped off. But we opted for the skid plates for that and if that is on there then we should have a pretty good level of protection i think about three eighths of an inch of steel uh, protecting that so we're going to go ahead and get this rocker trim panel cover on and uh, i think there's about 17 to 20 that of the rib nuts that we need to install in the side of the truck so we're going to do that now get that piece mounted and then uh, proceed with the rest of the installation of the rock slide engineering steps We have the rocker trim panel on now, and there were a total of 16 rib nuts that we had to put inside of this. And as you saw there, started with the middle, bolted that on, that way you can get good placement. And what I ended up having to do was get the back end attached, and then the front I had to kind of pull down to get this seam where we wanted it to where, uh, where it looked correct. So the only issue we had was when we got it all said and done, our very last riv nut did not line up with the hole. So what I took was, well, I've already put it away. I took a, a step bit on a drill and just opened up the hole just a little bit to where that screw would go in. And before we put all of these in, we put anti-seize on those and then just wrist tight with a ratchet. And that was a, I think a 730 seconds I believe uh, but anyway that's on now what we're gonna do next is start hanging the rock slide engineering steps and one thing that I would recommend after doing a few of these on these trucks and, and JLs and JKs is I would take a bit a drill bit and enlarge these two front holes where the factory rock rail attached and then next take out the two 10 millimeter bolts that go on on there so we're gonna we're gonna take those out now it's a good time if you've uh, now's a good time to empty this out if you take this thing wheeling at all. You can open up the fender and some of our drill filings uh, can come out of there as well. So you basically just peel that fender opening open and all that stuff will fall out. So we're gonna clean up the mess now and then we're gonna continue on. All right, so we went ahead and pulled the center body bolt completely out and the reason for that is there are some threads up here next to the washer that don't allow us enough room to slide this bracket under the head of that bolt. So what I'm gonna do is take a grinder and just kinda level off these threads. That way the washer can slide out and then we'll be able to slide this bracket under the head of that bolt. All right, so as you can see there, I don't know if you can see that back behind there, we ground those threads down, which allowed that washer to slide down a little more, and that allows us some better fitment of this. And while we were there, we cleaned up some of that Loctite because 
that's uh, that'll be bad if if that one caused us a problem. All right, now that we're prepping the rock slider for installation, you've got the front section and the rear section, and they will bolt together with four carriage bolts with washers and lock nuts with this shim between them. So this will slide up here, and we'll put a carriage bolt through this plate, and then that locks into this plate here with a washer and a nut. And then you'll put the other three in and tighten them. There's this rubber bump strip or weather strip that the slider pushes into to seal up this gap. And since we've done the plate on the body that needs to be spaced correctly so that we don't cut into this weather strip. So what we're going to do now is just kind of mark the placement of this weather strip on the body. That way we can put it on straight. So what we're going to do is remove this. We're going to put on the bump strip and then we need to make a shim that's the same thickness of the slider to bring the slider out so that whenever it's installed for the last time, it puts a little bit of pressure on that weather strip, but not enough to puncture it or, or cut it. So we're gonna mark the body now, and then remove the slider, and then reinstall or install this strip here, which is double-sided tape. You can see here what we've done. We had to get a piece of aluminum. I uh, just picked this up from Home Depot and we transferred holes to go over those studs. And then also too, we drilled an additional hole here, an additional hole here. And those are for the bolts here that go into the factory fender. Since we opted for the additional skid plate that comes up and covers the outside, we need to knock this logo off. So just take a flat blade screwdriver and a hammer. Knock those little rivet heads off. They're aluminum, so they come off easy. There we go. Now, as long as that's flush, we are good to go. Now we're going to install the skid plates on the outside of the slider. And the back section is about a foot and a half long. And you're gonna need two carriage bolts, two washers, two nuts, and two of the little hammer style rivets. So we're gonna lay this up under there to see how it fits. Right there, you can see it just fits perfectly. So what we'll do is we'll throw these rivets in the side here, just to kind of help hold this in place. There we go. And then we'll slide back under here and make sure these carriage bolts can line up. So what we can do now is we can hammer these rivets flat and that's done uh, just with a hammer. And then now that the rivets are holding this in place, we can uh, guide those carriage bolts the rest of the way and put the nuts on them.
The next phase of the installation of the step sliders is the harness. So this power wire is gonna to go to the battery. This is a relatively new style. So there's going to be a cutoff switch. This will be ground and that's gonna go on the inside fender and the frame area there up near the battery. And then we follow this leg down through here and we have the driver's side harness. So we have driver's side uh, motor module assembly. This is actually going to be the power for that motor on the driver's side. This is going to be our lead that goes to power up the entry lighting. And then we have these two wires that are gonna go up through the floor through a grommet into the cab. Now, that's all right there on the driver's side. This leg here is gonna go above the cross member over to the driver's side. And um, I don't remember if I told you or not, but that, that is the passenger side. Sorry if I messed that up. But over here, this is the driver's side. The same two wires are gonna go up through the cab to the door sensors, light connector, motor connector, module connector, and then in addition to the two sensor wires that go up through the body, we've got a third wire loom that has the power and ground for the cutoff switch that's gonna be mounted inside. All right, as you can see, this Jeep is black because I messed up on the audio for the installation on our shop rig. So we're gonna go through the interior harness installation of this. So we're gonna pull up the carpet back here. There's trim that goes along through here. That's gonna be removed. Then you have a piece of um, seam sealer style tape over a body plug. And you're gonna take a pry bar or a screwdriver, pry that out. So we've popped that out on both sides and then we're gonna grab the grommet and install that. All right, so now the grommet is installed. We've pulled up the wiring harness from the inner fender well and installed the cutoff switch right here on this 10 millimeter bolt. There's also an option with a push pin to put it over here on certain models, but since this is a diesel, this one's gonna go right here. This is the ground stud that we attach the wiring to, and then the fuse is tucked over here on the back side of the battery, and it attaches to one of those studs on the battery terminal. You can see here where the harness goes down. This one also has metal cloak inner fenders, just like ours does. And it runs down here and they provide you with this clamp and bolt for the bottom side. And then you can run the harness along the slider. And there are nice little zip tie holes there. Um, so we run all the way back to this window here and we've tied the harness up out of the way and we have the module connector down there, the motor connector here. We still have our uh, entry illumination light dangling. And then we have the two wires going up into the cab for the door sensors. The door sensors run up through that grommet and then we have that butyl tape that we removed, uh, reinstalled, and then the harness runs up here. The one for the rearmost sensor is going to be the one that's green and black. And then the other one goes up here to the front door. And that one is going to be blue and black. Here you can see the rear door sensor is just above the hinge. And the magnet is right here stuck onto this foam piece here. So you can see a small little line that is an imprint from the sensor here. So when you close the door without the magnet, you'll have a little imprint on this foam and you'll know exactly where to put that sensor for the rear door. We have the rear door functioning now. So once you close the door, the step will retract. 
All right, same thing on the front door. The sensor goes just below the latch and then you've got the wire tucked back in here and all of the trim goes back on just like it came off from the factory. And then over here on the door, we have measured and discovered that's the placement for the magnet. So we will close the door and the step will retract. All right, in reference to the harness going from one side of the vehicle to the other, you can see it comes up over here and goes across the cross member and we have it tied up to the stationary part of the parking brake cables and then it runs over there across the top of the fuel tank to the other side which we will come out right there and then you can see where we've attached the other side all of the trim is back on and under the dash here You'll see the diagnostic terminal, and then we've got our on off switch, and that shares a bolt, which is this eight millimeter bolt right here. And then the wiring, of course, goes back behind there and is tucked behind the uh, side kick panel here. We have attached the LED light, the entry lights to the back, and we've zip tied it to one of those places in the slider, as well as the wiring. And then now, when we open up the door, we have one light up there, and then we have the wire fastened up out of the way. And then when you close the door, the lights turn off and the slider shuts.